is another warm welcome from the BRTK TV studios in Nefkosha. I'm Jan Ghazi and this is A Cup of Conversation. Welcome to the show. This week on my program, I have a lovely lady. Her name is Yaprak Kurdal, and she is originally from Turkey. She lived for many years in Canada. She's back in Turkey now, but she's traveled around the world, many countries, many cities. She's a blogger, a writer, and she's here in the Tiran Sea, and she's now on my program. So let's welcome, a warm welcome to Yaprak Kurdal. Hello, Yaprak, welcome to the show. Hello, John, thank you for having me here. It's lovely to meet you today, <laughs> and thank you for coming in. I know that you are actually leaving the island after this interview. Right away. <laughs> thank you very much for taking time out of your time here to come to BRTK. Now, originally you were born in Turkey. What city are you from? Izmir. I'm from Izmir. Of course. All the beautiful women are from Izmir. <laughs> thank you. And uh, you grew up in Izmir. Yes. And then you left for a while and you went to Canada, is that right? Yes, actually I studied in uh, Turkey. I studied university in Bosphorus University. I worked in Turkey for uh, more than 10 years. Then I got my immigrant st status and I moved to Canada. And what was your job in Canada? What did you study in Turkey? What was your profession back then? I studied business administration in Turkey and I worked for multinational companies in Turkey but um, I wanted to move somewhere that I could like speak English and uh, I wanted to discover the world actually and I picked Canada because Canada uh, was giving immigrant status so I applied for immigrancy and then I moved there and I started working for an uh, insurance company. It is the biggest insurance company in North America. Uh, I started uh, in call center and then I uh, promoted and I became a marketing manager for, uh, for the company and I was there for like 12 years. For 12 years? Yeah. Where were you in Canada? Where were you based? I was based in Toronto. Toronto? Mm -hmm. Very nice. And then I think four years ago you left Canada yeah. and returned back to Turkey but this time I believe you are in Istanbul. <laughs> I or don't know where <laughs> I don't know where I am based in. I <laughs> I live in Istanbul and Bodrum. Six months in Istanbul, six months in Bodrum. Ah, Bodrum, very close to us. <laughs> yes. Yes, Bodrum, beautiful uh, it's city. It's beautiful, yeah. So you are now, really, mm -hmm. I can't say retired because you're too young to be retired. <laughs> but you've given up your career, your profession, yeah, to follow your passion, yeah, which is traveling. Yes. So where did you begin traveling, Yaprak? I mean, where did you first start? I know, you, uh, as you said, you wanted to travel the world and you began with Canada, <laughs> moving to Canada. But based in Canada, do you start traveling around the world from there? Actually, I started traveling when I was 20 years old. Oh. I was at my, uh, I joined a, an organized tour uh, in my university. I was in my 20s back then, yeah. and uh, it was to the former Russia, uh, former Russia, and uh, yeah, it was a tour uh, with my colleagues, uh, with my students with my friends yeah. and I was there for 10 days and what I have learned from this trip was world is changing so rapidly so uh, when I was there it was uh, we paid only four dollars for the domestic flights we paid four dollars for the dinners we had and it was like unlimited vodka unlimited caviar so uh, <laughs> you cannot find it anymore yeah. so the world is changing and uh, before everywhere changes you need to go there so you began with let's say with russia yeah i i started with russia with russia and you always said that you wanted to travel mm -hmm. you said to yourself i want to travel the world and you're talking about bucket lists and yes. making things that you want to do on the bucket list you're very very young to think about bucket lists as well you're oh, too thank young you. that's so when kind of you when you're <laughs> older you think of bucket lists before i die when, <laughs> when you think the end is nearer you think about bucket lists but you began traveling and how many countries have you traveled to so far as of today, 67. 67? Yeah, but I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow because I might go somewhere Yeah. like tomorrow. <laughs> By the time this program is aired this weekend, it yeah. could be 68, 69, 70. Yeah. And, ha and over 400 cities? Yes. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Oh it's a lot, eh? It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot, but it's a good thing. And I'm sure many people would like to be like you and have the chance to travel the world. And so, you decided that you wanted to make the most of your time every weekend, every long weekend, you would go somewhere. So which places have you been to so far that have really, 
Like, what on your bucket list, first of all? Where did you go that you thought, I must go here? So, uh, for instance, scuba diving. Mm -hmm. I have decided to uh, dive in the Red Sea. It was the, t it was the thing that I put on top of my bucket list. Mm. I said to myself, I'm going to dive in Red Sea. And then I thought, OK, if I want to dive there, I have to be experienced enough so that I'm not going to play with myself because you need to uh, like fix your buoyancy. You need to be a good diver to really enjoy the dive. Mm. So I started taking my classes and getting my uh, license in Turkey. When I thought that I was experienced enough, I went to the Red Sea. So it was really amazing. I really enjoyed diving there. And I couldn't stop myself. I have been a diver for uh, almost 20 years now. And uh, yeah. We were talking off air before the interview and I said that I like being in the sky. Maybe I could be a, a <laughs> skydiver or a parachutist. And uh, the water to me, even though I love swimming, because we're in northern Cyprus, we have the sea around us, I don't know if I could dive. And you said the same thing about yourself 20 years ago. Yeah. I never thought I could dive either. Really? But the thing is, the only uh, limitation is yourself. Yeah. So if you limit yourself, you are not able to do it. But if you say to yourself, OK, I'm going to do it. Yes, I'm afraid of diving, but I'm, I know I can do it. This is what I have done. So I said, I'm going to do it. And I'm an experienced diver right now. I have uh, like over 300 dives all over the world. And I never thought that I could hug a nurse shark while I was diving, but now I'm doing it. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Do you think that now you choose your destinations so that you can dive as well as see the country? I mean, does it, does it affect you that you want to maybe be able to dive or...? For sure. Uh, like, for instance, uh, last year I have been to Maldives and also Indonesia. Mm -hmm. And those trips were uh, specifically for diving. I did uh, stay in a liveaboard in Maldives. And I haven't even seen much in the country. Same with Indonesia. I have been to Rajampat. It is an amazing place. I have stayed in an amazing resort. But I didn't get a chance to see the country. And um, you know what? Diving is so tiring. And you have to carry the equipment with you. Yeah. So once you go diving, you can't really see much around the country. It is only specific to diving. Yeah. But if you don't carry your diving equipment with you, and if you say to yourself, OK, I'm going to have only um, two dives only for one day, then yes, you can visit the country as well. But if you want to really explore the underwater world, then it needs to be specific to diving. The underwater world is very different. It is. It's beautiful, and we're going to see some footage in a bit about mm -hmm. uh, you know your your dives. I think in the Maldives. I think is where we're Maldives where we're and Philippines. Yeah. <laughs> Before we see that though, the reason why you're here today is because you actually have a blog, mm -hmm. and it's Yaprak uh, Kuchitunya, yes. Small World. Yes. And you have a blog. You also write for Zoom magazine here in North Cyprus and for Gourmet magazine yeah, in North that's Cyprus. Correct, yeah. And in fact, our common friend is Birol Bebek. Thank you to Birol for yeah. introducing you to us here at BRTK. So where does writing come in? I mean, did you always say that when I'm traveling, I had to write as well. When did you start writing? That's a good question. I started actually uh, writing about uh, my trips uh, when I was in Canada. And it started after my trip to Peru. Because what happened is uh, I have like searched a lot about Peru. And what I wanted to do specifically is uh, walking the Inca Trail. So it was on my bucket list as well, walking yeah. the Inca Trail. And if you want to do it, you have to uh, get the permit six months ahead of time. And most people don't really know about this. And when I searched it, I have found out that all the permits were sold out six months ahead. So um, that's why I have booked everything a year before my trip to Peru. And I said to myself, I have searched a lot. Why don't I start writing about it so that it will open up a vision for people who want to go to Peru and who want to walk the uh, Inca Trail. Mm. So this is how I started riding and then I couldn't stop myself and I started riding and riding and all the places about uh, I have visited even before my trip to Peru. Now it's my passion. 
now it's your passion, it's your life, you are so lucky Yabrak, <laughs> to be able to do this. So uh, here today we have one of your articles yes. uh, in Zoom magazine and if we can uh, just show this to our uh, viewers at the moment. Uh, in this edition of the magazine you are in, this is in Turkish obviously, uh, the magazine is in Turkish, you're in India. Yeah. And all the photographs, you took at least yes. photographs and you share your travels with your readers are uh, very beautiful photographs, amazing photographs, oh, I have to you. say, uh, Yaprak, you are very, very talented as thank a photographer you. as well. Just some of the uh, pictures that Yaprak has uh, shared in the, the Zoom magazine. So, do you write every month, every month a different article or yes. just occasionally? Yes, every month. Every month. I have actually just started, this is my third magazine, I believe, in Zoom ah, and Gourmet. New. Yeah, but I will continue writing for those magazines. Fantastic. But you have a blog, don't you? I do. That you update yeah. every... After my trips, uh, trip. each trip I write about the places I visit and mm -hmm. if it is only specifically for scuba diving, I write my experience about scuba diving in this place as well. And I want to mention that my blog is in Turkish, but if the readers want to um, learn about the place, they can like Google translate it and they can have a look at the photos and mm -hmm. I also have videos posted on my articles. And my social media postings are in English and Turkish, so... Right, so everyone can really benefit from Looking, your yeah. from your wonderful uh, travel oh, experiences you. let's now take a break and show one of your videos okay sure. because as we've spoken about underwater and scuba diving so much uh, we want to share your experiences so the video we're about to see where was this footage taken which country were you uh, Maldives and Philippines Maldives and Philippines yes and it's actually you diving in yes, there. someone's videoing you yes uh, do you, do you video yourself at all? Do you have a camera or not? Uh, not underwater camera. Not underwater. And for underwater photos, I always take them from professional photographers and yeah. I photo credit them. Okay, brilliant. But this is somebody who has videoed you. <laughs> yeah. What an amazing experience that you had. Is it one of your favorite places, do you think, now to, to, to dive? For scuba diving, yeah, I should, it, it's not the only one. Uh, I love Red Sea, I love Maldives, I love Philippines, and I love Raja Ampat. They are all amazing places. Right, okay, so let's now take a very short break, and this is footage that Yaprak Gudal has kindly shared with us, sharing her experiences under the sea.
I'm super old. Yes, a fantastic short video, short but sweet, of Yaprak Gurdal under the sea. Amazing in her travels around the world. She has enjoyed many experiences and under the water, probably one of her most uh, favorite experiences. And I believe Yaprak, you were saying that uh, on your blog, when you were sharing your experiences, that one lady who was a diver, who stopped diving, said, Arthur, seeing you diving, she what is the dive again? Is that right? Yes, that's right. So <laughs> she said she uh, hasn't uh, been diving for 10 years, but after she saw my uh, postings in Rajampat, she said she wanted to go to this resort and she wants to start diving again. So, yeah. which is amazing. I mean, I get to influence people and uh, I get so positive feedback from them. And I say to myself, this is why I'm doing this. Is, it makes it all worthwhile, doesn't it, when you get good exactly. feedback. And um, I suppose with a blogger, as be, being a blogger, you get feedback from your readers, do you? Do they yes. write to you? Yes, they do, they do. And they keep asking me questions about the place. And sometimes uh, they are asking me questions if they are planning to visit this place. Sometimes they say uh, they never thought of visiting this place, but after they see my postings, they feel like they have already been there and they want to see this place and which makes me really so uh, happy before you go to a country let's say you decided that you want to go somewhere to a city do you sit at home and do all your research beforehand where you want to go what places you will visit where you will eat drink stay yes. is that how you work out do you, do you have that your own diary of what you will be doing so you don't just wander around thinking what do I do you actually know no, Wait, actually, or? yeah, you can do it as well. If you are planning to like um, see the world uh, non-stop, yes, you can do it. But I'm going to a place for 10 days or two weeks, so I have to do my research and do my homework before yeah. I go. And I uh, even write, I take some notes about the small history, the places to visit, the places to eat. And when I go there, I feel like I have already been there before. And uh, I express my feelings when I am there. I write right away. Otherwise, I, I may lose the feeling about this place. So I write right away. So whilst you're on the holiday, I'm working. You're working. I'm working. You're collecting all your information. Yeah. Whatever you feel, whatever you're experiencing at that time, yeah. you are sharing. Yeah. And then obviously sharing online. Yes. Uh, with your uh, followers on uh, social media. Exactly. Your and your you know uh, followers on your blog. Amazing, isn't it? I mean, to be able to to share your experiences, to get good feedback. Mm -hmm. And as we said, you are writing also for Zoom, but also gourmet. Mm -hmm. So do you feel that when you go to a country, you have to try? their local dishes do you make a, do you make an effort to go and look at some different food that you might normally wouldn't eat that's a good question <laughs> actually i started doing it after i started riding for gourmet <laughs> because i was only exploring the uh, places uh, in the city yeah. but right now i'm also trying to taste the food and the uh, uh, local cuisine yeah. so that i can write for gourmet i know people are so like into the uh, food yeah. of the country so i'm doing it right now what do you like the most about traveling? Is it meeting new people, experiencing the cultures, the food, the history? What do you enjoy most about traveling? Why do you want to travel all the time, Yaprak? Uh, what, is the, what is the attraction for you, really, deep down? So if you stay in one place, uh, you only get to know what is around you. But once you are traveling, you learn more and you get a vision of the world and you uh, get rid of your limitations and you start to be more flexible. And that's why I'm traveling. I see different cultures. I see uh, tribes in Africa and I see how they are living and I can appreciate my life more when I'm traveling there. That's why I'm traveling and I don't want to stop because I have a lot to learn. There's lots more to discover, lots more to do. <laughs> yeah. What's been, I know it's a very difficult, difficult question to ask now because you have so many memories, so many experiences, but is there one experience that stands out from all the others that you've done that you were amazed, you were overwhelmed by in a country? Is there one memory that sticks out or do you love every place for different reasons? Uh, Can you think of anything about my you? heart is in Asia and Africa. Really? Yeah. So if I like moved somewhere else, it would be Asia for sure.
yeah, this is what I can say. It doesn't matter which country, but somewhere in Asia. Because the, wow. the, the culture is so colorful and people are so friendly. So that makes me feel like I belong there. And um, like different countries have different tastes, I can say. For instance, going even from going from uh, Kenya to Tanzania, they are like close to each other. Uh, but the culture is so different. People are so different. So you cannot really say, OK, I have been to one country and I have seen enough. It's never enough. And it is always something to discover yeah. in the world. Is there a country that you've been to once that you think to yourself, I haven't had enough time here. I love it so much. I'd like to go back again and, and revisit. <laughs> I think most of them. <laughs> most of them. <laughs> That's good. Time That's is good. never enough, yeah. So that means that you love every country that you've been to so far, you I, know, yeah, enough to I, go back again. I do. Uh, maybe I can say that there are some countries that I can really live in. Uh, in some countries I would never live in, but yeah. I could go as a visitor. As a visitor again. Yeah. Again, talking of air, you said that you came to Cyprus first time about 20 years ago. Almost, yeah. Almost 20 years ago. And, and you were diving as well here. Yes. Then. Yes, I so was a diver. You, you've seen the underwater experience of the Ex DRNC. Yeah, actually, I have a like unique experience about Cyprus. This is what I remember when I think about Cyprus. I was di uh, diving here. There was a dive site called Fred. And I was diving with groupers. And I have done something that I shouldn't have done. I have taken an egg, a boiled egg with me. And I was planning to give it to the fish around me. But once I had the uh, egg with me, I felt the teeth of the grouper here, right here. The grouper saw it and it came right away and it like took all the heck, uh, the whole egg uh -huh. from me. Yeah. <laughs> and my friends who were diving with me, they said that they will never forget about this because it was such a unique experience. Very unique. <laughs> Very unique. <laughs> Amazing. Grouper teeth here. <laughs> so you have a good memory. I do. <laughs> but if you were, if you were reviewing Cyprus again, North Cyprus, a wonderful uh, small island in the Mediterranean. Uh, where would you say to people to go? Where would you review? Would you review Guinea, the harbour? Would you say go to Lefkosha, go to Gazimausa? I mean, what is your favourite experience of North Cyprus? So Cyprus has a lot to offer to everyone. It yeah. is not just casino. It is uh, history and uh, uh, culture and also Mediterranean Sea. So Karpas is amazing. It has a yeah. beautiful coastline. So. Everywhere is different, and I love Girne and I love Mousa because they are by the sea. And yeah. Lefkosha has a lot, uh, actually. It has changed a lot over the years. Yeah. But you still like to come back here every now and then and to see. Sure, definitely. Uh, the and one of my followers actually asked, why are you going back and going to Cyprus a lot? I mean, you are traveling and then going to Cyprus. You are traveling, going somewhere else and going back to Cyprus again. So maybe there's a small, you know, uh, place in your heart that loves Cyprus. Yeah, definitely. Uh, loves traveling here sure. in, in, the, in the TRNC. Where next? You said to me that by the time uh, this program is aired and you leave right after this interview, you leave our island, you might go somewhere else. You don't know yet. You have many plans. But is there a country that you are thinking of going to? Have you got anywhere in mind next? I don't have any firm plans yet, but I, uh, I will be going to Canada. Uh, and also, I will be going to Africa. I want to go to Africa for sure. I want to do the gorilla trekking in Uganda. Wow. I want to visit yeah, South Africa, uh, Botswana. So I will be organizing it. I haven't done anything yet. You've done lots of amazing things. Uh, it's not just traveling, but actually experiencing the countries in a different way, like diving or going trekking or with the animals or whatever you're doing. Uh, do you travel alone all the time? Are you always by yourself? Uh, I am making my plans alone. I, uh, I mean, I tell my friends if they want to join me, they are most welcome. But uh, most of the time, I'm like getting invitations from tourism offices, so I travel alone. But uh, when I go there, for instance, I have just been to Vietnam, and it was a, a tourism fair, international tourism fair. It was only me going from Turkey, but there were other journalists and bloggers uh, from all around the world. So you are never alone, actually, even if you. Uh, leave the leave the country alone. E even if I leave the country alone, I'm not alone when I go there. So I'm always with people, 
I'm interacting with them, which makes it so actually nice. And you meet new people wherever you go, yeah. experience the culture, yeah. the beauty of the country, and so you don't know yet where you'll be going for sure. No, I don't know yet. At the moment, but um, you have a bucket list. We keep talking about this bucket list, but is there one thing that you want to do that still is on your bucket list that you haven't done yet? Like gorilla trekking in Uganda. That is, that is the next thing. Yeah, scuba okay. diving in uh, Australia in Great Barrier Reef. Wow. Yeah. Have you been to Australia? No, not yet. Not yet? Not yet. Australia, look out. Yaprak is on her way soon, <laughs> fingers crossed. And tango dancing in Buenos Aires. I haven't been to Buenos Aires yet. Yes, uh, tango dancing. You mentioned that. I know that you like tango. Yeah. And, and are you a dancer? Do you dance tango? I did uh, dance for seven years when I was in Canada. But mm. after I moved back to Turkey, I didn't have time because you have to be dedicated if you want to be a mm. good dancer. So I was uh, going to milongas every weekend in Toronto. But uh, unfortunately, I cannot do it anymore in Turkey. Yeah. But I will start dancing again. So if somebody is watching now from abroad, we are online, or if somebody who is reading your blogs from a country, let's say they invite you over and you haven't been to that country, so you, you accept invitations to different countries maybe. If yeah, they say to you, yeah Prague, come and join us, we'd love for you to come <laughs> and be, it could be anywhere, it could be Ireland, it could be Spain, Italy anywhere around the world. If they invited you, do you think about going to that country? Why not? Yeah? Yeah, as long as there's no uh, war going on. <coughs> of course. Yeah. yeah. As long as it is safe, I feel safe. And I feel safe everywhere anyways, even, even in Africa. Uh, as I have mentioned, I mean, even if I'm going alone, I'm not alone there. Some countries you need to um, like organize tours with a um, company. Yeah over there. So this is what I'm doing. This is what I have done for Kenya and Tanzania. I have joined uh, uh, safaris yeah. with them. So yeah, I mean, as long as I organize things and I feel safe, and I feel safe everywhere anyways, I would go. There aren't many people who can say they've been to over 60 countries and over 400 cities around the world. And I, I am envious of you. I wish I could travel like you. But as you said, you gave up your career, let's say, uh, or put your career on hold to go for your passion. Do you say to other people, if you want to travel, do it now? Would you, would you recommend other people who have an interest in traveling like you? Would you say to them, go for your dream? If you have the, the chance, maybe if you have the money, if you have the time, would you advise other people to travel around the world? Because the world is changing and time is running out. Exactly. The world is changing. The time is running out. I would recommend traveling to everyone. But uh, I have also mentioned that the only limitation to ourselves is us. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I, I, I haven't limited myself uh, and I don't want to limit myself anymore. But uh, of course, I cannot tell anyone to quit their job and start traveling. I cannot do that. But they can start traveling for the weekends, for the long weekends. And uh, they can always save money. Money is not the limitation, I should say. So um, like I have started traveling and I was staying in a tent. But I was still traveling. Yeah. So you don't have to stay in luxurious resorts of and you course. don't have to spend a lot of money. Like, um, for instance, for Maldives, I have purchased a ticket for like $300, like one year ahead of time. You can purchase the tickets uh, before you yeah. go there and uh, you can reduce the budget of your trip. And you can always do that as long as you want that. You are very well organized then. I am very, very well organized. In advance. Yes. You know what you're going to be doing. Yeah. As long as you want to do it, you will I do will it. I will do it, yeah. Yeah, right, we'll do it. I will do it, yeah. It's good advice. No doubt. <laughs> no doubt. And it just goes to show that really there's no excuse not to follow your dream. No. And not to tick off those things on your bucket list. And we have only one life. One life. A very short life when you think about it on this wonderful planet of ours. Yes. But um, 
You've experienced it maybe in a different way than most people, by going to different countries, experiencing cultures, you've made great memories along the way, mm -hmm. and you're sharing these memories with your blog, mm -hmm. and by writing in publications like Zoom and Gourmet, and uh, let's just share now the information for those who want to follow you. Uh, even though you said that your writing is normally in Turkish, some of your social media posts are in Turkish and in English, yes? Yes, correct. And my uh, website is uh, .com. Yeah. and uh, my social media accounts are Facebook and Instagram. It is Kuchuk Dunya Yaprak. So if they like and follow my pages, yeah. they can see uh, where I am going next. Yeah. And uh, you can follow, yes, like Yaprak said, follow her on her social media account and uh, Yaprak Gürdal, Küçük Dünya, Yaprak Küçük Dünya, very easy to find. And uh, basically follow her going around the world and maybe then you can get the bug to, to go around the world as well. But I think that you are an amazing lady. Oh, thank you so much. Very, very uh, charming. You have a great personality. Uh, I'm sure you make lots of friends along the way. You are never alone. As you say, you <laughs> might travel alone sometimes, <laughs> but you are never I'm alone, never alone yeah. when you go to a new city. And I hope that you have great times in the future. I want to see you um, scuba diving in Australia, Coral Reef. <laughs> I want you on that gorilla track in Africa. Ooh. <laughs> I want you everywhere, oh, uh, Yaprak. And maybe you will share again in future editions of magazines, but we'll be following you. I'm going to now follow you on your blog. Perfect, thank you You'll have so an extra much. follower with me. And uh, do you think you'll come back to North Cyprus again soon? Sure. You will? I don't know when, but sure. Yeah, soon. <laughs> so you, you'll go and come back, but Cyprus is now a little mini little home for you as well yes, here, yes. I hope, with your connection to Zoom magazine. Yes. I want to thank uh, Bilal Bebek for bringing you in today. Yeah, I want to thank him too, and I want to thank you for having me here in the studio, BRT It's been a studio. pleasure. It's wonderful, and I am so jealous of you, but I wish you all the best. As long as you can keep flying, fly for us around the world and share your experience with thank us. Thank you. Thank you so much, John. You're more than welcome. <laughs> and uh, have a safe flight as you leave the TRNC today. Yeah, I'm leaving right away, actually. I'm going right to the airport and to I'm airport? going back home. Going back to Istanbul. 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 And then from there, we don't know where. I don't know where. But we will be following you. <laughs> we'll be following Thank you. you. OK, and with that, we've come to the end of this fantastic edition of A Couple of Conversations. I hope you enjoyed my chat with Yapra Gurdala. I certainly enjoyed it. And the snippet of uh, footage that she gave us was just a touch of what Yapra has been doing over the years around the world. Please follow her on YouTube, on her blog site, Kujitunya Yaprak. Uh, she is everywhere, and she is by our side when we are with her online. With that, thank you for watching. I'm here in the TRNC, still. I'll be with you next week again. So join me for another couple of conversation. Until then, have a great week. Bye-bye.